Greetings everyone. You are welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will talk about inheritance in C++ and this is part 1 of this topic. Now what is inheritance? If we see biologically, inheritance is the process of genetic transmission of characteristics from parent or ancestor to offspring. Now the animal kingdom is divided into various classes. You might have uh, already studied in biology in class 10 and mammals is one of the class of the animal kingdom. Now all mammals have certain characteristics like sweat glands, they have memory glands, temperature regulation etc. And if we take examples of two mammals, suppose dog and cat, both of them are mammals. So let's talk about them. If dog is a mammal, it has all features of mammals in addition to its own unique features like acute sense of smelling and hearing etc. That is, dog is inheriting all the features of the mammals, mammal class that is all these features and in addition to these features it has certain features which are unique to dogs only that is acute sense of smelling and hearing. Now we take example of cat. The cat is also a mammal and it has all features of mammal like sweat glands, temperature regulation, memory glands, etc. And in, in addition to this, it has its own unique features like binocular vision, strong jaws, etc. So, uh, we have seen that in real life, if uh, we see the examples uh, of uh, animals or birds, all of them, they have some features which are common and then they have their own unique features also. They are inheriting the features of their base classes. So this concept has been introduced in object oriented programming also and today we are uh, learning inheritance in C++. Inheritance is the process by which new classes called derived classes are created from existing classes called base classes. So if we have already a base class, if we have already a class and if we want to add some new features to it, so instead of disturbing that class, we can use inheritance to extend that class and uh, to add new features to that class. So the new class is called the derived class and the existing class is called the base class. Now the derived classes have all the features of the base class and the programmer can choose to add new features specific to the newly created derived class. So the older class will have all the features and to, uh, if we want to add some new features to it, we will make a derived class which will inherit the base class. That is, it will use all the features of base class and then uh, according to the choice, new features can be added to the derived class. The idea of inheritance implements the is a relationship. For example, mammal is an animal, dog is a mammal and hence dog is an animal as well and so on. This is a, is a relationship. Now let us understand the features and advantages of inheritance. Inheritance provides reusability and extensibility of code. It saves time and effort. It helps in the faster development, easier maintenance and also it easily extends the already existing code. Capable of expressing the inheritance relationship and its transitive nature ensures closeness with the real world problem. So as we have in the real world, the uh, inheritance feature is already existing in the real world. So we are using this feature in our programming also so that our program is close to real world and it is easy to understand and maintain. Now let us understand the syntax of inheritance. To create a derived class from an already existing base class, the syntax is class, derived. we give the derived class name, class is a keyword and it is followed by a colon and then we give our access specifier and after that we give the name of the base class from which this derived class is inheriting and then we give the definition of base class within these two uh, curly braces. Here, express uh, specifier, it can be public, protected or private. Now, suppose, let us take an example of it. If the base class is animals and the derived class is amphibians, it is specified as, first, the base class is declared, it is class animals. 
in which all the features of animals are there and then class amphibians colon public public is one of the excess specifier it can be public private and protected and then we give the name of the base class say the name of the base class is animals so class amphibian is inheriting from the class animals and then we will give the definition of amphibian class in this class in this example class amphibian have access to both public and protected members of the base class animals and it is very important to note that a class can be derived from more than one base class which means that it can inherit data and functions from multiple base classes also so if a class is inheriting from more than one class we can give the name of multiple base classes by separating them by comma so if we can give we can give a comma here and then give, we give the access specifier and name of the uh, another base class so we can give names of multiple base classes here and they will be separated by comma now access control and inheritance a derived class can access all the protected and public members of its base class and very important to note down that it cannot access private members of the base class so suppose if this is a base class and it has three set of members private protected and public so this the private members they are never inherited and protected and public members they can be inherited by the child class so very important to note down that private members of a base class are never inherited now we can summarize the different access types according to who can access them in the following way so if there are different access types suppose they are public private and protected and private then the members of the same class can access public protected and private members all the members are accessible to the members of the same class but members of the derived class can access public and protected members but they cannot access private members of the base class and members outside the classes they can access only the public members of the base class and protected and private members of the base class are not accessible outside the class only public members are accessible so the same class members can access all the type of members that is protected public protected and private derived classes can access only public and protected members and the uh, which uh, outside the class only public members are visible protected and private members are not visible outside the class constructors and destructors of the base class are never inherited a very important point to note down that they are never inherited now let us understand the visibility modes and inheritance a child class can inherit base class in three ways and these are uh, the the the, the uh, three different type of inheritance are private protected and public and now members of the base class can also be private protected and public so if the inheritance type is private the uh, private member of the base class is not inherited at all then the protected members of the base class they become the private members of child class and the public member of the base class they will become private members of the child class so in the private type of inheritance private members of the base class are not inherited and protected and public members of the base class become the private members of the child class now let us talk about protected inheritance again in that uh, in protected type of inheritance private members of the base class are not inherited however the protected members they become the protected members of the child class and public members become the protected members of the child class that is in protected inheritance private members of the base class are not inherited and protected and public members of the base class become protected members of the child class let us talk about public inheritance in public inheritance again the private members of the base class are not inherited and the protected members of the base class become the protected members of child class and the public members of base class become public members of child class that is in public inheritance private members of the base class are not inherited protected members of the base class they become protected members of the child class and public members of the base class become public members of the child class 
So it is very important to learn all these three except, uh, aspects of the inheritance. Now let us understand it diagrammatically also. So if this is my base class which has three sections private, protected and public. So the private members they are not inherited and this is my child class which again has three sections private, protected and public. Now the public members of the base class in the case of private inheritance they become the private members of child class and protected members of base class they also become the private members of child class. You can see here all of them they become the private members. Now let us suppose the type of inheritance is protected. So in this case again the private member of base class are not inherited. However, the protected members of base class they become the protected members of child class and public members of base class they also become the public members of child class. Now if we talk about the public inheritance again uh, in the base class the private members are not inherited and the protected members of the base class they become the protected members of child class and the public members of base class they become the public members of child class. So this is how all the uh, three type of inheritance work. Now let us take an example so that private inheritance is more clear. Again in private inheritance protected and public members of the base class become the private members of the derived class. So let us see this by an example. Suppose we have a class and the name of the class is base and uh, there are three sections private, protected and public. In the private section we have two members uh, in the int a and void func a which is a member function. Then again in the protected section we have two members integer b and the function func b and in the public section again we have two members int c and function func c. Now the class child it is inheriting from the class base and the type of inheritance is or the mode of inheritance is private. Sorry it is the mode of inheritance. So in this again the child class has three sections private, protected and public. So in the private section we have, we have uh, data member x and the member function func x. In the protected section we have data member y and the member function func y. And in the public section we have data member z and the member function func z. Now after the inheritance a new child class is made uh, and in this child class let us see the structure of this new child class. Now in the private section you see initially both the members are the members of the child class only int x and void func x and now as this is a private inheritance the protected members and the public members of the base class they become the private member of child class. You can see here now the new child class after inheritance is it is containing int b and void func b which are the protected members of base class and it also contains int c and void func c which is the which are the public members of uh, base class. We can see and the protected section and the public section of the child class will remain the same. There will be no change as you can see they contain data members uh, y and the member function func y and public section contain data member z and the member function func z. So we can say that a child class, new child class after inheritance has a bigger private section in which it has its own members and the protected members of the base class and also the public members of the base class. So this is my new child class after inheriting privately from base class base. Now let us talk about protected inheritance. In protected inheritance, protected and public members of the base class become the protected members of the derived class. So let us try to understand it with the help of an example. So if this is class base, again the same class which has three, three sections, private, protected and public. And in private there are two members, int A and func A. In protected section, int B and func B. And in public section, int C and func C. Then this is a child class and it is inheriting protectedly from the base class base. Again it has three sections, private, protected and public. Private has two members, x and func x. Then protected has two members, y and func y. And the public section also has two members, z and func z. Now after this inheritance, my new child class will look like this. It has a private section in which it has two members, the same members, int x and void func x. 
and the protected section of the child class has changed this time because this is a protected inheritance. So it has its own members Y and Fab Y and besides these members it has protected members of the base class. You can see int B and void Fab B. They have come from the protected section of the base class and then it has public members of the base class also int C and void Fab C. They have come from the public section of the base class. The public section of the uh, child class will remain the same. There is no change. It has only two members Z and Punk Z. So you see in protected inheritance, uh, the child class which is derived after uh, inheritance has the same private section and public section. But in the protected section, it has its own members and the protected members of the base class and public members of the base class. So this is my new child class after protected inheritance. Now let us talk about public inheritance. In public inheritance, but protected members become the protected members of the child class and uh, public members of the base class become the public members of the derived class or the child class. So uh, let us uh, make it more clear with the help of an example. So if this is my class, class base, which has three sections, private, protected and public, and the private section, I have two uh, members A and Funk A and the same one protected B, Funk B and public C, Funk C. Then you can see here, now this is my child class and this time the mode of inheritance is public. And it is inheriting publicly from class base. Again, it has three sections, private, protected and public. In the private section, there are two members X and Funk X. In the protected section, there are two members Y and Funk Y. And in the public section, there are two members Z and Funk Z. Let us see how the structure of the child class look like after inheritance. Now, this is my child class after inheritance. Now, this is the private section. The private section will remain the same in the case of public inheritance. It has, it, it has two members X and Funk X. Now, in the protected section, uh, I have the original members of child class that is Y and Funk Y. And besides this, I have B and Funk B which are the protected members of the base class. And the public section, I have uh, the original members of child class that is Z and Funk Z. They have, been, they have come from here. And then I have the public members of the base class. C and Funk C, they have come from the public section of the base class. So you can see my new child class has the same private section but the protected section is extended one is with its own member and the mem protected members of the base class and public section is also extended. It has its own members plus the public members of the base class. So this is my new child class after public inheritance. So this is all for this video. If you like this video, kindly give thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.